And Adele, thank you so much for coming in for this demo. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, and we've known yeah, each other a long time. We have. <laughs> and now we're colleagues. Mm -hmm. And um, taking this opportunity to uh, give people a sense of um, a little bit how, not just how EMDR therapy works, but a little bit from the perspective of the mindfulness-based mm -hmm. work and also uh, the meta protocol mindfulness and EMDR treatment template for addictions, but it's really also for trauma and adverse life events. And the whole deal being that EMDR therapy is a complete psychotherapy and that we place it within uh, another complete psychotherapy, uh, mindfulness based work or Buddhist psychology and put that all together. And what we have is a way of easing suffering, transforming suffering. And, and so uh, you've been trained that way and uh, a lot of your colleagues have been trained that way. Um, and then in the context of this demo, you know, taking the opportunity to do a modified sort of phase one and phase two, and then do some reprocessing. So you're yeah. still up for that, right? I'm still up for it, yes. <laughs> it's been a while actually since I've done my own reprocessing. So okay. this is gonna be a nice journey. Uh, okay, so um, uh, from that phase one, uh, phase two perspective, just, uh, you know, uh, do you have any, uh, having not done reprocessing for a while, do you have any questions or concerns about how EMDR therapy works or, you know, wh what it is that we're actually doing when we do reprocessing before uh, asking a few other questions? Um, do I have any concerns? Yeah. Well. Because, um, I guess because it's been a while and I haven't looked at these traumas mm -hmm. um, really closely, there might be some fear that um, it'll linger with me okay. more than I would like it to, right. or I might not be able to access it. So. Oh, one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. And just mm -hmm. knowing that what, what you already know and that you've done this work before both on both sides of the couch, as it were, right. which is that, um, we do all this resourcing beforehand. And I know you're a very resourced person mm -hmm. and that in the last 10 minutes of our session, we won't be reprocessing. We'll stop reprocessing wherever we are, even if we have an incomplete session, because one of the things that a lot of people have a fear of is incomplete sessions, meaning it doesn't get, the disturbance doesn't get to a zero, it doesn't go up to a seven in terms of the positive belief. Mm -hmm. And one of the myths I like to dispel is that that's a problem. You know, it's not right. a problem, right? right? So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. But um, in the spirit of the phase one work and the phase mm -hmm. two work, uh, what are uh, your strengths and resources and that which you tap into that keep you resilient, you know, today and brought you through all the work that you've done before. Um, today, I do have a very strong um, mindfulness meditation practice. Mm -hmm. And so the heart practices in Buddhism, uh, loving kindness and joy and even compassion more than anything mm -hmm. um, are the things I, you know, sit with. Um, there's also, I love doing walking meditations mm -hmm. and, and just walking and focusing on something positive mm -hmm. because it, it helps my brain continue to, to be stimulated uh -huh. bilaterally in that way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and then, you know, also just uh, speaking with people, friends, mm -hmm. you know, that can actually help co-regulate my emotions and things. Anything else in the strengths and resources uh, kit? Hmm. I, th I think that I have a lot, and for yeah. some reason I can't really think of what they are. That's... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, You're actually, good. <laughs> <All right. laughs> most of the time. Most of the time. I do have 12-step program, mm. you know, fellowship mm -hmm. stuff that I do, mm -hmm. and... Um, a sponsor, yep. and eating right, and yoga. All right, all right. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then going back to all of that list. Mm -hmm. So then, and I heard a couple of things that certainly could be used in the office. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say would be what you would prefer to think of as the resource we might go to? Uh, number one, if at any time you wanted to stop reprocessing, because it doesn't happen a lot, but it sometimes if it goes outside your affective window of tolerance that you might say, you know, 
know more and we go to a resource um, and or the resource that you might want to go to at the end, you know, when we have that last 10 minutes. So which of those that you listed uh, is most likely or is there one that you didn't list that you enjoy using? Well, um, any kind of meditation that will focus on uh, regulating the breath mm -hmm. and getting in touch with my body, a light source guided meditation okay. or... Light stream? Yes, like the EDR. light source. Yeah. I'm looking at a light source. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that kind of thing, just so I can get integrated with my body and my mind. Right. So. All right, good. I know how to do those. You know how to do those. Oh, okay. And you know, uh, in in a in a regular therapeutic relationship, there's a good chance that we've done a lot of work together on those kind of things. Like right. these are the kinds of things. You know, you come front loaded with a lot of things that sure. we might have if we were an actual therapist client. Uh, relationship over time mm -hmm. that we would have developed those together if you right. didn't have them to begin with. So that's great. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to ask you uh, to contextualize, you know, the kind of work that people do in phase one and phase two, but particularly in phase one when they're looking for uh, target memories and they're looking for themes and all of those kinds of things. And you know, you've been working on your stuff for a very long time, so. Um, if we had been in a relation, uh, therapeutic relationship over time, we would have done more than one session of mm -hmm. identifying themes and building rapport, you know, mm -hmm. which we have built in and right. all of that. So what would you say are like the major themes or the major uh, things in your own therapy and in your own recovery work that you've been able to work through over, over the years? Kind of like the completed phase one items. Well, a feeling of not being loved, feeling of feeling less than, like a failure, mm. uh, that I was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, all of those themes were things that, that I lived with for a very long time. Mm. And it was really hard to feel um, that anyone would appreciate who I was as a person, mm. just from a lifetime of traumatic stuff, right? And so I did a lot of work on, um, you know, father leaving, mm. father dying, um, mother not paying attention kind of stuff, you know, all that attachment stuff that, mm -hmm. that, that creates the low self-esteem that, that makes people feel like they're a failure. And here I sit, here I sit, you know, with a pretty good education mm. and a pretty good career. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that would happen for me, mm -hmm. you know, so... That's, that's why working on those core beliefs of not being good enough mm. and being wrong mm -hmm. um, were so valuable. So, yeah. That speaks so much to, thank you for that, that speaks so much to um, the power of, of just recovery, but also the power of uh, trauma therapy mm -hmm. uh, and going through those kinds of experiences that, again, if, if it had been over the course of our own therapy together, right? Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of the, the work that we would have been doing that you did elsewhere. Mm -hmm. that it, 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 it identified the, uh, the core beliefs, the core themes, what it was I need to work on, where, where it is that I'm suffering, and then going back and finding those events, but also those, the, the ruptured attachment and all the other elements, and then having them reprocessed. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of whether Absolutely. it was this way or, you know, some other way. And a lot of people who come into my practice, and I'm sure it's true for your practice, and a lot of the people who get trained the way that we train at our institute, mm -hmm. um, is a lot of people coming in front-loaded with a lot of therapy and recovery already. You know, not yes. the people that come into our rehabs, right. but come into our private, um, practice. private practice, and they have this... Uh, experience, you know, we don't eliminate it, we don't, you know, uh, look at it, uh, we don't poo-poo it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh yeah, you worked through that stuff, and usually what happens is, is that people will come into the office and say, oh, there's these one, two, three kind of things that are still stuck, right, right? Mm -hmm. after all that, and sometimes it's themes, there might still be themes left, or it might be just, you know, singular events, and we'll talk about that, mm -hmm. you know, in a few minutes. Um, and then there's uh, the p folks who come in, and uh, just to speak to the work that we do um, uh, 
with people who are in a center, right, in a treatment center, mm -hmm. is honoring the fact that not everybody who walks into a treatment center comes not front-loaded with resources, with an ability to possibly be getting into their reprocessing sooner than later. And that's, right. that's the way that we work as well, which is to um, work together with the client and with the whole team to see between all the resources that there are at the center, all the resourcing opportunities, and then all of the opportunities that the person did take on you know, outside the center, mm -hmm. even while uh, being in the midst of their addiction, that they may come in and we can't assume that they aren't resourced. And, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Your, the work that you've done, mm -hmm. you know, today, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, as we work with all our different clients, it's honoring all the work that they've done mm -hmm. and not assuming, right? Right. So, right. So, so, like, for instance, I don't want to assume what you do and don't have. We've known each other a long time, but, you know, I mm -hmm. still need to find <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, a, a casual cup of coffee is yes. different than what we're doing right now. So right? true. Yeah. So true. So, um, so let's do uh, again a sort of a a, a brief uh, compared to the way it would be otherwise. Okay. You know, phase one workup of uh, what would you like to work on today? Is it a theme, or, or is there a memory or two that's on your mind that you think you might want to um, work well, on? Well, well, there were a couple of. Uh, intense memories mm. uh, that I've never really focused on okay. and uh, well I'll describe them okay uh, and then we can talk about maybe how they're affecting me mm -hmm. um, one uh, was when I was a small child I was about six or seven and we had a, a, an apartment load of, of cats running around and um, different ages and one day I was running to answer the front door and a kitten ran right where I was running, and I stepped on the kitty, mm. and I stepped on its neck. Mm. And it, it was, I can't even talk about yeah, the scene. And, and you don't um, have so, to, you don't yeah. have to. You, that's the other thing, you know, you don't have to give um, you the whole story for us to be And so to today I'm a cat lover, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but okay. um, you know, I, I kind of pushed it away, and I don't know how it mm. uh, affects me otherwise, but okay. maybe I'm, I'm, I cry too much, or I, or, I've become mean. I don't know. <laughs> okay. um, the other one is pretty hardcore as well. Um, okay. um, my stepfather was a very, very lovely man, mm -hmm. um, and I was about—I uh, was 17 actually—and uh, we had lived with him for five years. Mm -hmm. And um, he took us away from that that cat house mm -hmm. into this lovely life. Mm -hmm. And being a teenager, I was on the phone. It was pre-cell phones. I was on the phone, and he kept telling me to get off the phone late at night and uh, so one time he just came in and he took the phone out of my hand and slammed it down and told me to go to bed and so I said I hate you I hate you I never want to see you again and I went to bed and he went to bed the next day he got up and went to work and I went to school I got home from school the phone rang and he had died from a heart attack so my last words were I hate you so those are two pretty big major memories um, and again, like you said, you're super resourced. So, super you know, resourced. You know, so you're working. You know, you're living and working in this life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, either one of those, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure would be something that uh, would be workable. What would you? What would you like? To, what would you prefer to work on today? I'm having kind of visceral reactions from both of them. Mm. Okay, um, so we're gonna have to do another demo later. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you want to do? You know, I think maybe my stepfather, only because I think that really affects my relationship with my half-sister, okay. his daughter. Okay. You know, I've kind of walked on eggshells around her my whole life. Okay. All so, right. Okay. So it might change that. I don't know. We'll see. And Eventually. It might, it might, <laughs> well, it might, it, might, it might change that. You know, we, we both know, you know EMDR is really quick. Mm -hmm. um, and we also know it's not the miracle cure that people, and as a matter of fact, that was some bad press it got in as much as it made people have certain expectations. Right. So um, one might call this, this is an event-based trauma, it's not necessarily uh, <clears throat> complex in its own right or part of a complexity, but it kind of is at the same time. So in any case, 
um, perhaps it will start the process of moving mm -hmm. this material. And um, so okay. if that feels okay, then we'll, we'll okay. do it. All right. Feels okay. All right. And um, would you prefer uh, tactile or do you want to go with eye movements? We discussed it before and you were talking about wanting eye movements. Yeah, the eye movements are good. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to spend just a minute checking the eye movements and okay. the distance and all that, and then we'll set up the target and we'll go. Okay. Okay? All right. Sound good? So put your gaze that way, and then just tell me if you're able to track that. It feels like I am. Yes, yes you are. Mm -hmm. I, I can see it. Okay. And can you track that speed? I'm just going to speed it up a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So, um, you know the drill, okay? So, I'm going to activate the target by uh, setting it up according to the protocol. And once we get to where we've set the whole thing up, mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, start the eye movements and then you okay. just notice whatever you notice and we'll just report, yes. Okay. All right, and know that I'm here at all times. And let's pick a, a, a physical stop sign of some kind um, in case you do want to stop the reprocessing for any reason, knowing that okay. I'm here to help you go yes. through it. Just, that? just go like that? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, as you think of the, your uh, stepfather passing away mm -hmm. um, and those were your last words to him, mm -hmm. um, what image represents the worst part of that? Uh, answering the phone. And as you think of that image of answering the phone, what negative belief do you have about yourself now in this moment? Oh, I'm, I'm a horrible person. And what positive belief about yourself would you rather be able to have even while thinking of that image? Well, that I'm a good person. And uh, when you think of the words, I'm a good person, while thinking of that image as it is now, how true are those words on a scale of one to seven? One is completely false, seven is completely one. true. And as you think of the words, I'm a horrible person, and the image, what emotions are present for you right now? Oh, just sadness. As you consider the sadness, and the words, I'm a horrible person, mm -hmm. and the image, all at the same time, on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 is nothing at all, and 10 is the worst you can imagine, where are you right now? Probably a 9. Okay. Now, what do you notice in your body? My chest is really, really tight. Okay. So, notice that tightness in your chest, mm -hmm. and the sadness, and the words, I'm a horrible person, and the image. Okay. Put that all together. And then... But notice whatever you notice as you follow the fingers. Well, I'm picturing myself, um, I fell to the floor, and I, I just can't stop crying. And um, when my boyfriend is standing next to me, and he doesn't know what to do. And, um, and I just hear the person on the phone just saying, Hello, are you there? Are you there? Um, that's, that's all I remember. I'm just having fun with it. Just thinking about money, that, that's my stepfather, and uh, what a nice man he was. And, um, 
picture him sitting behind his desk eating cherries, because that was his favorite thing to do. And they said, what he said that day was right before he collapsed, that he was the happiest man on earth. <laughs> and I just was so mean to him, just so mean. And he was such, such a guy. <laughs> And I just feel a lot tired right now, now thinking about it. That's not My throat is burning right now. I don't know why. Inside. You okay to keep going? Uh huh. I'm just picturing sitting in the backyard. What's that? See my mother crying. She keeps saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. My little sister was two. She's just wandering around, not knowing what to do. And I can't um, look at her because I just feel so guilty about what happened. So I'm just sitting alone in the backyard. So. Remembering the funny things Lenny did. And, uh, he used to just hum out of tune all the time. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> My grandmother came out from West Virginia. Forgot about that. My mom's mom. And I just can see them hugging and crying together. And my mom just saying, I don't know what I'm going to do, I don't know what I'm going to do. They're in the kitchen. It's probably a week later. After the funeral. Everything is just numb. The whole house is just numb. That's all. That's all. Deep breath. What are you noticing now? I'm remembering hearing a noise. I was in my bedroom. It's dark. And there's this weird noise outside of my window. And I got up and I walked into the living room. And there was an image of money or something sitting by the fireplace. 
And I don't know if it was a dream. I don't know if it was real. And he just said, I'm okay. That's all it said. And then I never saw him again. Shana's third birthday party. It was a couple months after he died, and there was a pony, a bunch of people. <laughs> Shana was drunk as she was having fun because she was three, and my mom just kept saying, I'm sorry your dad's dead, I'm sorry your dad's <laughs> That's my mother, very dramatic. And so she's trying to have fun, and my mom just keeps pounding into her. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry for the whole party. It was, it was <coughs> very typical, very typical. And I had to laugh at that at that time. I'm just noticing my body really calming down a lot. I don't have a, a solid image, it's just memories of how money took us away from all the bad life and brought us into good. And he was happy. He was happy he had shame. Yeah. He, was, he was just really happy. I'm just thinking about my little sister and how it's been really hard to uh, cultivate a really solid relationship with her. Even now, after all these years, just a little, a little egg shelly. When you think on the original image mm -hmm. on the phone call, on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 is nothing at all, and 10 is the worst you can imagine. Where is that image now? It's like at a 2. Any thoughts as to what's keeping it from a 0, or what's left between a 0? Just maybe thinking about feeling a little bit of guilt more than sadness. Still lingering because of shame. Okay. No self. Okay.
Well, I'm just thinking of Shana now. And my hands are tingling a little bit. That's that. Well, I'm just, I'm just feeling very calm, and I'm just feeling like I just want to have a conversation with my own food. I'm just thinking about me as a 17 year old and just not having any life skills. You know, I just didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't really do anything wrong. I just 17. That was that. I'm actually noticing the birds outside. Uh, when you think of the original image, zero is nothing at all, or neutral, and ten is the worst you can imagine. Where is that image now? It's pretty neutral. It's actually very neutral. So those words, I am a good person, that you came up with earlier, um, is that a good enough positive belief at this point, or is there something better or different? Well, what first came to mind was, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. So does that mean, well, yeah, I, I'm a good person, yeah. yeah. So when you think of those words, I'm a good person, while thinking of the image as it is now, on a scale of one to seven, uh -huh. where one is completely false, seven is completely true, where are you? Okay. I can't say seven, I don't. Maybe six. Okay. okay. And what do you think is between the six and the seven? <laughs> the guilt of the uh -huh. Okay. Good enough? Probably. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so, put together that positive belief of I'm a good person, along with the image as it is now. Okay. So I have a tingly feeling in my chest now. It's not tight. It's just like this. Like the, the airways have opened up. So, yeah, a lot more relaxation. And as you consider the image at the same time as I'm a good person, one to seven, where are you? Maybe a seven. So, notice the body sensation and the words I'm a good person and the image as it is now.
Well, I'm, I'm thinking about the image, and I, I really don't have any reaction to it at all. Mm. And I'm a good person when you think of the image as it is now. One to seven, how true? Yeah, that's true. I mean, there was no real intent. Mm. And then, yeah, that, that yeah. just was. Mm. So I think, yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So one last item. Okay. Is um, uh, you can close your eyes, or keep them open, whatever, and it's not like a big old Buddhist body scan that mm -hmm. takes a, okay. you know, a few minutes. Just check yourself from top of your head to bottom of your feet and okay. see if there's anything residual that you notice. It can be uh, pleasant or unpleasant. Do you want me to tell you what it is? Yeah. shoulders just dropped so, mm. yeah. yeah so put that clear body scan together mm -hmm. with the image as it is now okay Yeah, we, we call that we call that a complete <laughs> session. Yeah. yeah, and we still have you know almost ten minutes left. Pretty much ten minutes left too. Still, even when it's complete, we still want to have uh, that time left to be able to do uh, the resourcing. So uh, we have ten minutes less left in the session, as we always do. Um, so, and my question always is, you know, so what do you need? In the last 10 minutes you know sometimes when we have an incomplete session there's a lot of different kinds of needs right. and then but even at the, you know, these last 10 minutes making the transition from this beautiful strange process to you know walking out the door so I think uh, what I, do you need i need to just come back into the present moment okay i need and, to be in the room in my body mm, okay <laughs> and how do you want to do that do you want to do that by just talking about what just happened or do you want to do it through a dedicated kind of practice a guided meditation or unguided or you know what what do you need what do you what do you what will help you to bring you into the room why don't you do a bit of guided okay um and would you like it to be a uh, guidance towards the breath and or the body or sound or what would you what would, what guidance would you prefer what grounds you the most or oh okay we'll give you how, how about towards the body towards the body yeah okay so sort of a modified body scan. Yeah. About five minutes. Sure. So there's a few minutes at the end for anything else that you might need. Sure. Did you hear my back crack? I did. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah your body's already just like saying, okay, I'll yeah. do this. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and uh, close your eyes or keep them open, whichever is your preference. I'm going to close my eyes. Okay. So, uh, and then choosing a portal for tracking the breath just for a moment before mm -hmm. we start to go into the body so just outside the nostrils or just inside the nostrils is good and or or the rising the falling of the belly or the chest and just taking a few really normal breaths from this place And now we're going to notice uh, points of contact to start with the body. So notice your back against the chair and that contact, contact in your seat and the backs of your legs. Contact of the bottom of the feet against the floor.
contact of your arms against your sides, if there is contact there. And the contact of your hands on your lap. And just taking a minute to notice if any of those points of contact feel particularly grounded. It may be all of them, it may be just one of them. And just noticing uh, which, if any of them, feel the most grounded. And go ahead and let yourself have that ground. You can lean into it if that feels right. You can just continue to notice it. And then just sitting in this place of ground. If at any time the grounding doesn't feel as grounded, see if you could just notice that with as little judgment as possible. maintaining whatever sense of physical ground, turning some or all of your attention, your preference, back to the breath, and maybe taking three, not, it doesn't have to be super deep breaths, but take three breaths a little deeper from that place of ground. As we come to the end of this meditation period, opening your eyes at your own pace, whenever it feels like you want to. And once your eyes are open, any movement you feel you need to make to transition back into where we're at. Oh, <sighs> All right. Did that work out? Yeah, it worked out great. Uh -huh. Worked out great. Okay. So anything else that you feel you need for going back out into the world for today? No, I don't need anything. Okay. No, I just have a, a nice, a nice memory mm -hmm. of my stepfather that I haven't had in a long time. So I'm walking away with. So yeah, it's good. Well, I haven't thought about it in a long time. So. All right. So, just a reminder: reprocessing. We usually say reprocessing may continue. I think we should just change it to reprocessing yeah. will continue. <laughs> um, so. You know, there's no homework in EMDR therapy, um, but you know, notice what you notice. If you notice anything that you want or need to bring into a therapeutic context, you know, um, notice other memories, uh, continued changing body sensations or feeling states or any of that. You know, anything that might be helpful to you. And uh, again, like what you just said is one of the beautiful things of EMDR therapy is that. Uh, memories that were maladaptively processed are brought to an adaptive resolution and then become resources. Like we just become more resourced 
with these new positive beliefs and positive memories that get unearthed through this process. So feel free to just, you know, dig into that and enjoy it. And even, you know, whenever you feel like you want to, you know, use a butterfly hug or, you know, just tapping and just think about those positive memories and tap it in. Yeah. <laughs> so slow tapping. So. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Anatel. That's great.